can't really be surprised, ladies and gentlemen. Ice Poseidon gets caught. Listen, dude, if you are still following around Ice Poseidon in 2022, you gotta be an idiot. $300,000 from a crypto rug pull scam. I don't think he regrets anything or feels bad about any of this. Is that a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme? Okay, uh, I don't really know how to explain it. I don't know what I don't know where I am. I'm just on 53A is my that's my gate. And I'm not sure telling you guys that is a good idea, but I, I what what can you possibly do, right? The news, Phoenix police searching an American Airlines plane at Sky Harbor. Police say an anonymous threat was called in. That threat wound up being not credible. Only ABC 15's John Erickson in the terminal with those relieved passengers denied. Paul DeNeal. Passengers on that American Airlines flight from Los Angeles say that after they landed here, police surrounding the plane. In an ABC 15 exclusive, the guy taken off the flight at Sky Harbor says... He was the victim of a prank bomb threat against that plane. And I just can't help but feel really bad for all those people. Oh, Danino. Otherwise known to his chat as Ice Poseidon, spent years garnering a reputation of being swatted by his own fan base. Day after day, publicizing every avenue of his personal life, cultivating a community of bad actors whose behavior at times bordered on criminal. To his credit, letting his viewers call the shots not only proved itself wildly entertaining, but wound up being especially profitable too. At the end of the day, it's only content, right? Well, I want to know how we got from here to Paul is scamming his fans out of half a million dollars. Something we've all done. Join me as we analyze the chaotic but inevitable downfall of a streaming icon. This is the story of Ice Poseidon. Okay, all I want to do is just stream. It's not worth it because nobody understands. It makes my job so much more difficult. But first, today's sponsor, who happens to not be a fraudulent crypto scheme, Bespoke Post. Bespoke is a monthly membership club that delivers awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. Take for example the Terra Box, made by Bare Bones, which is stationed in Salt Lake City. With 90% of their products coming straight from small businesses, every box comes with around $70 in retail value at the cost of just 49 bucks. You'll get to preview everything in your box before it even ships, which means you can either keep it, swap it for a different box, or skip that month entirely. So although it's a subscription service, you only pay for what you want. This month I chose Over Easy, which is great because now I have no excuse not to cook in the mornings. Equipped with the most durable cast iron skillet from Old Mountain, a leather holder from Softline, and even a Bloody Mary mix from Sucker Punch Gourmet, which all go great with the platter I got from their plated box. In addition to the custom crafted serving platter, the plated box box comes with a rugged salt dispenser and a minimalist kitchen towel so you'll be ready to host your next holiday dinner. Get 20% off your first box by clicking the link down below and using Jawbury20 at checkout. Massive thanks again to Bespoke Post for helping out with this video. Cryptocurrency and scams. Today, a once massive streamer was exposed for stealing $500,000 from his fans. I'll be honest, in my opinion, Ice Poseidon is not a good person. So, what, what, what kind of kid were you? Or what did you do before this whole streaming thing? What led up to this? Paul Danino was born in Palm Beach, Florida on September 29th, 1994. His father, a plasma technician, and his mother, a mental health administrator, who went on to describe her son in 2018 as a shy kid who acted out to make friends, which may have only isolated him even further. Growing up in the gated community of Martin County, Paul was a self-described weird motherfucker growing up. After finishing off high school and getting a two years associate's degree, Paul went on to work as both a kitchen manager and a line cook for several years. Streaming is definitely not worse than being a line cook, but it's definitely more stressful. So when somebody throws up a plate that's part of like a four plate order and then you're wondering where like some big piece of meat is it takes 10 minutes to cook and you find out that the guy running grill didn't put it on and the entire order is going to be or that plate is going to be and you got to decide what you want to put in the window and what you want to to the window people about because you know they're going to give you and when you're trying to run every other ticket coming in to make sure that you don't fall behind like you're all of this is is less stressful 
than playing video games and talking to a stream chat? It's more- alright, how do I put how that? Is, but despite everything, he just wasn't happy. Really boring, just- I didn't do anything, I just went home after line cooking and just played RuneScape. It was safe to say he wasn't where he wanted to be. Burnt out in every other aspect, Paul found escapism in online video games. Most particularly, the fantasy roleplay of RuneScape, which he had been a fan of since 12. It's where the character Ice Poseidon was born, and it's also where much of Paul's social life was relegated. As outlined in The New Yorker, Ice Poseidon Poseidon could do things online for attention without suffering real-world consequences. An assessment I'd say his age like fine wine. But we're not there. <laughs> By 2015, Paul would upload old-school RuneScape content to a small audience on YouTube and quickly set his sights on a budding livestream platform that had just launched back in 2009. He didn't know it at the time, but in just a few short years, Paul would become one of the most influential entertainers on all of Twitch, garnering hundreds of thousands thousands of supporters before being kicked off. But again, we aren't anywhere near that yet. We still have a lot of ground to cover before we get into the fun stuff. In 2015, Paul was fresh out of a job, had just finished school, and needed something to occupy his free time. Devoting hours to building a following on Twitch, it wasn't long before people started paying attention. And thus, the Purple Army was born. I mean, that whole story just sounded ridiculous. His gang of hoodlums that say the per the right white skin of the purple army, dude. Who knew the exact crowd responsible for Paul's generous income would also be the ones to destroy him in the end? See, Paul didn't treat his fans the same way other streamers did. He made them an active part of the streams themselves, calling them on the phone, letting them pick music, even allowing their company in games of RuneScape. They weren't treated like fans so much as they were personal friends. Which made sense considering, by his own admission, Paul didn't have much of a life outside the internet at this time. With you guys? being the only people that I actually talk to when half of those people tr do nothing but to try to piss you off you know over the course of a few months it starts to it just kind of it just starts to sink in the streams are good I think for most of the time but when I have one bad stream like I feel such a like a right now man from the jump it was clear how much these streams meant to him streaming it was more than just a pastime i mean at this point it was more than just a job it was his entire life and living a life strictly online certainly came with downsides when you just don't talk to anybody for so long it just gets to you and i know i should like not sleep for so long and i could go out and do sh i just don't know how to go out and meet people man without having like like, I don't, like, usually you meet people at, like, a job or, like, school or something. But there's, I don't know how to, there's no, I, there's no way for me to do that. There's no job. No school. So you have to imagine how Paul must have felt when he finally had an excuse to get out of the house. When he could combine his love of streaming with the outside world he so desperately wanted to be a part of. For Paul, everything changed with the release of Pokemon Go to the Poles. Arguably the biggest and most profitable mobile game of that summer, Pokemon Go was downloaded a whopping 500 million times worldwide by the end of 2016, giving socially depraved shut-ins across the globe a chance to combine their hobby of gaming with literally touching grass. Armed with nothing more than a backpack and a camera strapped to his head, Ice Poseidon began streaming himself playing the game in real life. The hype of going around catching Pokemon on in public spaces, combined with Paul's naturally outlandish demeanor, made way for some pretty memorable interactions. What's up, guys? I'm good. How you doing? I'm all right. I'm looking for Pokemon. You happen to have any? 13.78 for a Charizard? Man, I'm thinking more like 69.69. Are you recording us? No, it's not. It's just a fashion statement. All right, yeah, I'm recording. Yeah, we got a bunch of people watching. Yay! When you tape the, the phone to the shirt. Then, uh, you know, girls want to have sex with you more. No, not really. See, Ice had finally found himself a golden goose. He had been successful with RuneScape, of course, but now, clashing his streaming talents with a physical activity gave him the chance to make money and content, all while improving his own social skills. And the Purple Army aided the f*** 
up. Whether awkward, funny, or sexual, Ice's IRL Pokemon Go streams were received incredibly well by his audience. In 2022, IRL streaming is basically just another genre, but six years ago it was a different story. Nobody had done it like this, at least not as well as Ice, regularly pulling 20,000 viewers per stream. With more subscribers, Ice began racking up more notoriety. His mother even noting her shock when kids recognized her son at Halloween that year. It just completely blew us away, she noted. They all knew what Ice Poseidon was, and they stopped dead in their tracks. Ice became such a favorite creator, in fact, that he may have had something to do with the launch of a new category on Twitch that December, the IRL section, giving creators the chance to stream themselves out and about without the need for video games. Hello, how are you, sir? Are you the drug man? You look like the guy who has the drugs sitting there on the tree with the jacket. Alrighty, goodbye. I love you. What? I love you. I love you. <laughs> good, good, good. I love you too. <laughs> Do you guys have a lighter downstairs? No, we're not smoking in the hotel room. I just need to get rid of a. A Basically, just made a living out of going around in public, annoying people. Yo, what are you doing, bro? Yo, dude, what the f are you doing, dog? Are you what the? F Wherever I went, chaos was soon to follow. Any kind of a report of an emergency? You seem to be around with your camera. All right, spread your feet. Gee, I wonder why. I think it's clear Ice was never known for his responsibleness, respons responsibility. Stop driving like an idiot. You may think it's entertaining, but how do you think the passengers are You almost ran over a f***ing bicyclist. I did not. Yes, you did. I saw him. You almost ran over the bicyclist. I did not. Literally as it, as he pulled out. Deposit. <laughs> maturity, yeah, that's the word. He's never known for his maturity. Nothing like a little steak and shake. But that's just who he was, tactless, carefree at times, and obnoxious at others, which certainly generated the peculiar type of following. In fact, his core audience has been blasted as toxic for as long as ICE has been around. Calling and harassing a woman in mass after Paul leaked her number on stream? Accidentally, I think? On the very same day as the IRL category's launch, he was issued a 45-day ban from the platform he dominated. His third at that time. But Ice Poseidon was hardly deterred, making the call over his uh, extended vacation to make the move from Florida out to Los Angeles, where he aimed to connect and collaborate with other popular creators. It was clear that even in the face of setbacks, Paul was determined to continue paving the way of an entire subgenre. He wanted to make a difference, and it's hard to deny he did. Embracing a controversial open door policy in his new apartment only led to even more chaos once the ban was over. But, uh, I got a stream that I have to, uh, finish here, so. I have a stream that I'm gonna finish here, so. Dude, don't point that at me, I'm serious. Okay, but, um. Paul openly encouraged his fans to visit him in person during streams, if they so happened to be in the area. Why not drop by and make some content? As dangerous a prospect as that may sound, this just proved Ice's total commitment to not only developing a personal connection with his fans, but his quest to make the most wild, provocative streams imaginable. A few bands weren't about to make him change the way he did anything. He wanted absolute transparency at all costs. A strength in the eyes of his community, but a major lapse in his judgment as time went on to show. Putting himself in a vulnerable position he wouldn't seriously regret, at least until 2017. If I'm showing where the f I am on live stream, then it's completely fine to swat a plane? You're delusional. You're f delusional. The police were nice, yeah, they were, they were great, they were nice. They, they pulled me out of the plane, but... More than 150 passengers were on board after Danino and his companion were removed. Uh, the plane did eventually get to the gate, and the other passengers went on their way. On April 28th, 2017, Ice Poseidon made the mistake of exposing his location to a toxic audience at probably the most inconvenient time ever, as he was boarding a f***ing airplane. Sure enough, a bomb threat was called in by someone from the chat claiming to be Paul, which put the entire airport on lockdown. Well, he and another 
another woman were promptly pulled out of the aircraft by some not so amused officers. They said he was acting strangely. He was running around with a GoPro type thing and a big large camera. It was a little nerve wracking, especially when you couldn't lift the shades back up and the plane was still rolling. Like he called in and said that I had a bomb on the plane. That's what he said. Like he was pretending to be me. Now remember, this was far from the first time Paul had been swatted, but it was the first time delaying an entire flight from taking off. The severity of this stunt was at a level never before seen by ICE's community. Halting an entire airplane and generating national headlines across the mainstream wasn't exactly the best PR for Twitch. And thus, he was formally suspended shortly after. Permanently. Wait, wait, why is ICE banned? Wait, why is ICE banned? Are you sure? Why is ICE is banned? Are you sure? WHY IS ICE BANNED?! Sparking outrage across the live streaming community, many believed this was unjustified, including ICE himself, who went on the record claiming, when you look at the terms of service, there were no rules saying that you shouldn't leak your location. Now, although ICE had never been swatted in public up until this moment, he probably should have known better than to say this. 53A is my, that's my gate. And I'm not- That was really stupid of me, to be fair. What with ICE's community having a history of pushing him to his limits, it was only a matter of time before they took it too far. Moving forward, you'd think this might be a wake-up call for Paul to police his chat a little better, or be more diligent as to not release his location, and if people do find out where he is, maybe don't platform or give any attention to those who want to cause chaos. Unfortunately though, our man didn't seem to learn much after the airport incident. And I do have to agree with Sunny V2's assessment when he says, well, what about after the SWAT happens? Does he just ignore it? No, he does the exact opposite. He puts the SWATters on a pedestal. Ice Poseidon gets SWATted, 445,000 views. Five videos later, SWATted on a plane, my perspective, 357,000 views. But over the long run, do you think that posting videos about being swatted that you know have the potential to go semi-viral is going to encourage the swatters or deter them? It's going to encourage them. Whether out of ignorance or otherwise, Paul made sure to put a spotlight on those who swatted him. When you give these things so much attention, even in a negative way, it sends a message to keep doing it. Probably why he was swatted every day for a month at the peak of his antics. Viewers are calling into local businesses with baseless accusations accusations that he was carrying a bomb or had children locked in his basement became a reality that ICE had to live with. Needing to notify the police of this kind of thing every time he moved, which was often. An existence I can't imagine was anything short of exhausting. You have no idea how f stressed I am, dude. I have f I like, I have like these f security guards and sh they're telling me like, oh yeah, you're going to f jail. You're, you're going to jail. You're doing this to yourself because they called the phone, they called the number of whoever called the f casino, and my phone rang, okay? Whoever did it spoofed my number, and it showed up as my number who called, so I have some problems, I have like, I have so many ish problems and issues, dude, um, and I just can't, I just, I don't know, dude, I just, it's, 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 it's legit, I don't know man, it's so stressful dude. If you ask me, looking back on this man's career, one of ICE's greatest mistakes was his inability to keep his fanbase in check, even when he made it clear he didn't the want their behavior plaguing his anymore. reputation. I want you guys to control my life. I mean- This is one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made in live streaming. His chat had a stranglehold on his life for years. Nearly every aspect of Paul's existence put under scrutiny by his fans, including his own relationship. Like, bro, like, I just like the girl. And that's pretty much it, dude. And I know, and I was just afraid of telling everyone because I know about the storm that happened. You know what I mean? Everything was just getting better. Everything was doing just fine. And then it was like, I got back in touch with her and I was just like, I can't tell anyone because it's going to be a storm all over again. I was scared. Hated to death by the Purple Army, Ice's girlfriend Caroline was criticized for just about everything under the sun, smeared as a leech, clout chaser, gold digger, even cruelly dubbed alien for her plastic surgery. Viewers thought she was taking Ice away from his content, using his influence to further her own career as a streamer. In the end, despite any feelings Paul may have had, things fell apart for the couple. Paul being quoted with, it just 
just got too much, dude. It was just easier for me to break up with her than to deal with it. Here's the thing, dude. I, I'm, I can never be in a relationship while I'm a streamer. I just, it just doesn't work out. I just can't do it. I can't. It's just too stressful, and I can't balance it, and I just don't want to do it. It's just annoying and i just don't i just i just don't i just don't care but yeah don't please don't talk about caroline guys like i still care about her but we just can't be together that's essentially it i mean streaming was his business of which he made caroline a part of for a little while he saw a notable jump in earnings just a week after the couple broke up although he said the community didn't cause the breakup i can't imagine it made their lives any easier as it's hard to ignore the consequences of paul's chat constantly memeing and making fun of his girlfriend and really just cruel ways. In the aforementioned New Yorker article, Paul can be heard saying, you have to be inconsiderate and a little bit of a sociopath to stream. I have to turn on the stream tomorrow and not give a fuck about any of this, but I actually do give a fuck, and I'm actually annoyed and hurt and awkward by all of this. A telling window into his approach to content creation. When I sent her that text message that we broke up in January, I cried for like three days, dude. I was so sad because I did not want to break up with her, but she really like, you know what I mean? It was just detrimental to my streams. Ice's career required putting his privacy in jeopardy, living a life in front of a Twitch chat in exchange for money and fame. Caroline may have been off stream, but that didn't stop fans from speculating whether or not she was actually out of Paul's life for real. And come to find out, she wasn't. Which would only become apparent halfway through one of the biggest streaming ventures Ice would ever embark upon. A 14 person road trip across the East Coast. This is a 14 day trip so far, so we'll see how this goes. We got 14 people, 14 days. Being booted off Twitch wasn't about to get in the way of Ice making as much money as possible while doing the absolute most scuffed streams imaginable. Moving his show to YouTube where he would broadcast him and his closest friends traveling up the east coast from California all the way to Washington in an RV. With the cast of kooky characters including anything for views, Dan Kwan, Scuffed Steve Jobs, and <laughs> Or, as one commentator put it, a collection of the worst people from all around the world stuffed into a small confined area for an extended period of time. And of course, thousands were there for it. I'm not here to get into every small bit of drama that unfolded throughout these streams because God knows we'd be here all day and I'd probably get age restricted for showing some of the footage. But if you want a taste, Ice can be seen at the end of the episode about to hook up with some swingers from Tinder. The cameraman is forced to the front of the RV to make awkward conversation with her husband before he finally goes to the back to watch Ice and his wife do whatever they're gonna do. Then Sam Pepper goes outside, drags a dumpster to the side of the RV so he can climb on top to look inside Ice's room and describe what's happening to the camera. All of which going down within 10 minutes of the second stream. What the f is happening. It wasn't until a few weeks in that the real drama began between Ice and his fans themselves. When it was revealed through a girl named K-Bubbles that Caroline and Ice had never actually broken up and had actually been in an open relationship for months. This sparked yet another saga of fighting between Ice, Caroline, and K-Bubbles that all culminated with him revealing he had relations with both girls at the same time and that it wasn't a big deal. This is what's going on. I'm fucking Caroline. This girl, I'm f***ing a lot of girls. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's not really that big of a deal. On principle, Paul shouldn't owe his fans anything. As much as there should be a degree of separation, Ice never allowed one, and as a result, felt the consequence of his private matters unfold in a public setting. What I mean is, finding out that Caroline and Ice hadn't broken up led to more distrust between him and his fans. Of course, this never should have been his fans' business to begin with, but because it was, the transparency he had strived to build over the course of several years was slowly crumbling. His chat felt betrayed. They didn't like anything being hidden from plain view. A warped dynamic between creator and fan that ultimately goes to encapsulate Ice Poseidon's entire brand, for better or for worse. Hi, my name is Paul Danino, otherwise known as Ice Poseidon on the internet. 
I'm making this video as my apology to Twitch in the hopes that somebody will listen. After a couple years of avoiding headlines, Ice Poseidon quietly fell back into a slower streaming schedule. After reflecting on the long-standing toxicity of his community, Ice showed a desire to change his content for the better. Uploading tamer videos and streams to YouTube, he even published an open letter to Twitch asking for a second chance on the platform. He believed that after years of streaming on Mixer and refining his community, his content and demeanor had changed enough that he should be let back onto the platform he had started on. Three years ago, I was banned on Twitch for enabling a very toxic community. And a toxic community that has affected the industry, myself, my friends, and other creators as a whole. And my mindset now is completely different to what it was three years ago. And I found out after reforming my community and changing the actions that I do, I have found happiness again in streaming. Happiness that I haven't had in over two years. I've learned a lot in the past couple of years and I've been a streamer for almost five years now. And I'm please asking Twitch to just give me a second chance. Well, compelling to some, Twitch never responded. But still, it was nice to see this new side of him. At the time, it seemed as if he had finally matured after all these years. But little did anyone know is that everything would change at precisely 11 a.m. on January 30th, 2022. The famous live streamer Ice Poseidon just scammed his followers for up to half a million dollars, and I'm gonna prove it. Earlier this year, YouTuber and crypto scam watchdog Coffeezilla published a revealing video on Ice Poseidon and the questionable nature of his recent endeavors. Well, the questionable nature might be a little too generous. You want to keep the money that's not yours, that you took from the project, even though you'd failed to deliver. I mean, I'm not really sure what you want me to say, but yeah. Yeah, I could give the money back, but I'm going to look out for myself and not do that. I, I... In this day and age, it's hardly uncommon to find streamers and YouTubers taking advantage of their fans with transparent crypto pump and dump schemes. While with crypto still being so new, the government has yet to impose limitations on what you can and can't do to make a quick buck. A lack of sufficient regulation that's led to infamous rug pulls across the internet. The worst of which being YouTubers aiming such rug pulls at those who support them the most, their fans. Well, cute Ice Poseidon. After his ex-bestie Sam Pepper got busted by Kafu for masterminding the infamous Save the Kids scam, Ice was apparently there to take notes. Not on how not to scam his fans or even how not to get caught instead of following Sam's blueprint almost to a T and was hardly subtle about any of it. After going on the record promoting a long-term project he seemed to have a lot of faith in, CX Coin, named after his network of the same name, was of course revealed to be an absolute utter and complete scam. Don't take my word for it though, he basically states it better than I could. It looks like the coin got rugged. You know anything about that? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, not rugged, but uh, I mean. Well, someone pulled all the liquidity out. That's a that's a rug, right? That would be a rug, yes. Uh, but there is still liquidity in there. 40k got left, and 300k got ripped out, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that is exactly what happened. Right. Are you laughing? I mean, is that funny? Mm. I mean, no. Before getting into the numbers though, let's just hear this guy out, okay? He says he didn't actually market this thing to any of his casual fans, only people in the crypto sphere, as he put it once he was found out. It doesn't matter who is affected, it still doesn't change what it is, right? I mean, I, am I going insane? But then again, Ice being a shady guy running scams on the internet really isn't anything new. Ice Poseidon has a history of openly scamming people and being super honest with it. He even went on stream one time just fully admitting to a Ponzi scheme he was running. In order for the investors to make their money back, uh, what we do is we grow the company to a certain point and then we have other investors come in and obviously they invest their money as well Hopefully more than two so, million dollars so and then scheme. obviously when we get more than two million dollars invested yeah, you, you, The other investors will get their two mil okay. back. It's not a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme. Okay uh, I don't really know how to explain it because I didn't explain that very well, I guess That is the textbook definition of a Ponzi scheme I know it may seem weird, but I used to be a kind of a bad person on the internet when I was younger, dude I had a I had this thing where I uh, it was a fishing site and I fished credit cards. I didn't do anything um, With the credit cards because I didn't I was like afraid of going to jail my ears are popping or going on a hill, but we, we did it um, 
We also, Gray, you remember what we used to do? I don't know if yeah, you want to say it. I don't know what you're talking about, with, bro. <laughs> all right, I won't. I like to get away with the things I do, not fucking brag about well, <laughs> I mean, that was 10 years ago. I don't think we can get arrested anymore for that. <laughs> but I just, we never used, I, never mind, I never used a credit card, but... Yeah, I know how to get on the deep web, dude. In a subsequent final statement made after Coffee's initial video, Ice Poseidon proceeded to double down on his decision to pull a portion of his hefty investment, being $300,000, because it was, quote, the right thing to do, out of fear of it being devalued, which of course doesn't make any sense, as stated by Coffee. When I asked Ice Poseidon where he was going to put the money that he took out of the crypto markets, he told me he's going to put it in the crypto markets. Uh, invest into crypto, Ethereum. Mainly. He had to take the money out of the crypto markets because that's a terrible investment. And the real place to put the money is in the crypto markets because that's where the big money's at. And I mean, on top of all of that, admitting to removing the money in what can only be described as a textbook rug pull, Ice had the audacity to go on and say, no one got scammed. He made $300,000, but not at the expense of his holders, which is literally just not how crypto works. If you're going to be taking money out of something, that value is going to be dropped down onto the people who are still holding. They lose, you win. Hundreds of thousands in this case, which he even admitted he could return if he so chose. It's just he needs Needs to look after himself right now. Hope he enjoys that Tesla before he's riding in the back of a squad car. At the moment, there's like a big gambling kick, so I'm like gambling and doing crypto stuff. So, are, are you is, are you figuring out crypto, crypto and gambling the same thing? I mean, yeah, they're similar. <laughs> <laughs> I invest in a lot of the like sh coins, right? Like a lot of the like you, you you put money in and then you sell in like 20 minutes when it pumps. There's no regulations behind the sh whatsoever. I have no idea if it's legal. Then why I'm not going to start a crypto coin? Is because someone's gonna get because dude if i see it if i see a million dollars i'm selling i don't give a i'm not gonna be like i'll hold for you guys bro i see a million dollars in my portfolio i'm out the cautionary tale of ice poseidon is one with many ups and downs going from an introverted runescape streamer to one of the most iconic recognizable irl names across twitch and youtube etching his name into the streaming history books and being respected by numerous high profile personalities up until recent i don't think ice's story had to end this way had he just set up more boundaries with his fans and been more more diligent about moderating the toxic sides of his chat, there's a big chance he could have even stayed on Twitch, not gotten swatted as much and gone Twitch. down as one of the greatest to ever do it. But that hasn't exactly been the case. Paul isn't that kind of person. His true colors have finally been unveiled. While his influence on Twitch and the larger streaming zeitgeist is hard to deny, Ice's already controversial reputation may have finally been put to rest by following in the shoes of notable shameless scammers to come before him. Saying he wants to change than taking the low road and adding to his already ungodly robust bank account in the most reprehensible way a person can. It didn't have to end like this. But because it has, I don't think Ice Poseidon should be remembered as anything else than a deceitful rat who will throw even his most ardent supporters under the bus if it means just a 1% uptick of his net worth. Beep on, beep on.